Hello everybody, this is Alan with HeadphoneReviewHQ.com and today I'm bringing you a review of the Fio X3 Audiophile Portable Media Player. And first let's go ahead and do the unboxing. You can see kind of what it comes in here and uh, you know it's packaged well enough to keep the thing nice, safe and sound. It's you know it's effective packaging. So let's go ahead and open her up. And the first thing we'll take a look at here are the cables. So in this first bag here, what you're going to see is there's a micro USB cable. Uh, there's your micro that plugs into the Fio X3. And on the other side is your standard USB cable that plug into your computer. And this is used for both charging and for transferring files to and from the internal and the external storage card. This cable is your coaxial digital out. So if you want to send the true bits to another external DAC or, or amplifier that you have, then you can do that. Here's your instruction manual. I highly recommend reading that because there is a lot of functionality on this device. I'll go over some of it, but not all of it. They do ship with a couple of screen protectors. And here is your warranty manual. And the nice thing about this, they also tell you how to identify whether or not it is an authentic Fio X3. So... All good stuff to have and here is your Fio X3. You can see the silicone case that it's in. It's They did a nice job with this. They've got the cutout so that you can use all the cables without actually having to take this thing off. So if you want to protect it, keep it from getting scratched up and banged up, you can leave it in the silicone case. But if you're like me and you like the way things look, you know, you're going to have to unpeel this. So we go ahead and take this thing off here. And much like with the Fio Mont Blanc and the E17 and the Andes, I just love the fit and finish they do on these things. I mean, this is this is a gorgeous piece of work here. You have the brushed metal on the device. The buttons are all metal. I mean, it's just a they've done a really nice job of making this thing pretty. So if we look up close here on the bottom right, you're going to see that play, pause, okay, and power. They combine a lot of functionality in that one button. Then next to it, you have your volume up and down, and that's also your menu option changing. And then the ones, the fast forward and up and down are your menu selection. And the top left is your uh, go-to menu or return. And then your hold, much like with their other devices, if you're playing and you got this thing in your pocket and you want to make sure it doesn't change on you just because a button accidentally got hit, you just turn that on. Here you have your headphone output jack on the right. You have your reset button, which will reset you back to the original settings. And then your coaxial output that plugs into that cable mentioned previously. And over here on the side, that's a TF card slot. And that actually stands for Trans Flash. That's the old name of it. It's actually a micro SD card slot. And I've got a 32 gig one plugged up to it. On the right there, you have your line out. That's basically an aux out. And then on the left, you have your micro USB input. And on the back, again, just a nice, you know, brushed metal look. And they've got their logo etched in and all that. I mean, it's just, they've done a nice job. It's pretty. So... Now, let's talk about the screen real quick. It, they, it ships with a, uh, a plastic cover on it. I'm going to remove that. The screen is fairly low res. It's a 320 by 240, but it looks pretty good. I mean, most of the time, you're not going to be looking at it as much as you're just listening. So there's my micro SD. And here, I'm going to show you how to do a firmware update. You're going to go to fio.com.cn, go to support, and then download. And it's not labeled great. You're just going to see this FW 1.3.1. Download that, or if later, it might be a newer one. And then you're going to unzip that file. It will put an x3.firmware in the folder. Copy that over to the SD card, and it has to be on the micro SD. You can't just do it um, directly to the device. That's one of my uh, qualms with it. If you, don't have a, if you don't have a micro SD card, you're not going to be upgrading the firmware. So plug the SD, you put this in there, and then to, to actually do the firmware, you hold the top left and the bottom right button together, and then it'll start up and it'll roll through this. I sped this up. It takes a little over a minute. So there you go. It'll, it'll boot back up. And then the first thing it's going to do is ask you to choose your language. Obviously, I'm going to pick English. 
And then just to show you where you can go find out what firmware you have, you go all the way down to the system settings and then go down to uh, storage and info. Actually, I'm going to set the backlight up so we can see this a little bit better. But your info and storage, hit enter on that and you see that you've got 1.31 on here now. Now, I want to run, run you through some of the options on this uh, just quickly. So you've got your treble and your bass modification, so you can EQ these things independently. It goes all the way up to plus 10 and down to minus 10 on both. You can either tap the buttons to do this or you can hold them down and quickly go through them. Um, you know, hopefully you have some headphones that are great on neutral and you can just leave it there. But I did find these extremely useful if I'm listening to some hip hop or something and I want that extra punch does a great job. And then you've got various different play modes. You have, uh, right now that shows shuffle, you have repeat all, you have repeat one, and then you have play all and then stop essentially. So, uh, there's, there's several different play modes. Those are mostly standard on just about any portable media device. So pretty standard. Browse files, you can look at the internal memory or the external, and you can see the different types of formats this thing supports. And there's even more than this. You have your WMA, your WAVs, your MP3s, your FLACs, your ALACs, which aren't on here, APEs. I mean, th this thing will play pretty much anything you throw at it, which is just beautiful. You don't have to do a bunch of conversions. Um, it will, you, there's a library update function on this, so it will try and categorize it by the uh, tags on the music. So that's nice. Memory play, I like to leave on. Uh, that basically means whenever you start the thing back up, it will pick up either on the track or where you last left off. Gapless playback, I leave on so it's a smooth transition in between files. There's still a little bit of a pause, but it does a decent job. But remember, FLAX and ALAX and all those are basically zipped up audio files. So it does have to unzip them to a certain degree and then be able to do it. Now, the gain there, you have your low and your high, and I left it on high because I was testing with the Biodynamic DT990 250 ohms, uh, so it did need a little bit more output, but the good news is it did a good job with that. And this is one of those things where it's a little frustrating because you don't know which button's always to hit. You kind of, I don't know, I fumbled around in here a few times just trying to figure out. So as a sleep, if you want to go to sleep listening to some stuff, it'll turn off automatically. Your backlight time is how long the, the backlight will stay on after you don't touch it for a little while. You have your idle power off, so if it's not being used, it'll just shut off for you. Uh, you're, you have various backgrounds, and right now it looks like it's only, it ships with several or three right now. And I haven't really messed to see if you can have more. I, you know, I, probably there is a way to do it, but I just haven't messed with it. Um, and then that's it. And so as mentioned, I basically use the DT990 250 ohms and the Grotto SR80s to do my tests with these. And, and for two reasons, one with the DT990s, good sounding set of headphones and I wanted to test out the 250 ohm load to make sure that it would handle you know being able to push those headphones and then with the grottos they're very sensitive to fluctuations in amplification and EQ so I just wanted to see how this thing sounded on its natural setting with those headphones and as you can see there there's a the display I talked about the 320 by 240 it's okay it's not it's not going to rival your smartphone or anything like that but you do get your cover art if it's available with the album that you put on there and it looks okay. It's, it's going to be good enough for you to be able to navigate and it's not offensive. So let's talk about the one major thing that everybody's going to want to know about. And that's the sound quality of this thing. It's fantastic. It sounds incredible. I mean, in a portable media player, I'm really shocked. I think they say that it, it will last 10 hours on a charge for listening and I mean, that's going to be 10 hours of enjoyment because now you can put your uncompressed audio on this thing and it sounds amazing. Like I said, with the, the Bayer Dynamic 250 ohms, it drove them well. I mean, it would actually get them pretty loud. I wouldn't say it's going to take you to uh, ear bleeding levels, but it's definitely got enough juice to, to crank it up to where you can enjoy listening. And with the extra detail and the non-compression, 
the music sounds fantastic in these things. I found that using the EQ settings up and down came in handy whenever I was wanting to listen to some hip hop or, or something like that. Or if I wanted to tone it back down and listen to some classical, it worked out great. Everything about it screams quality. The The sound quality can be compared to the Fio E10, which is highly regarded as one of the best uh, external da uh, DAC and amp combinations out there uh, that you can that can be had for a good price. And this is right on par. I know this uses a different chipset, and it is crystal clear. There's no hiss. There's no hum. There's It just sounds absolutely wonderful. You can charge and play at the same time, and I found that to be extremely clean. Uh, pretty much everything about this device, if you've been looking for an audiophile-grade media player that you can take with you on the go, this thing is outstanding. It really does a great job. And as far as I know, the only ones that you could probably compare it to are the Cowans. And from my understanding from other people, I have not tried them out myself, but everybody gripes about the user interface on the Cowans. The only gripe I have about the interface on the X3 is the button layout. For whatever reason, they chose to go with these offset button configurations. So like your, your rewind and your fast forward, they're angled. You know, the, the bottom left is going to be your, your rewind and, and slightly above it to the right is your fast forward. And the same thing with the volume buttons. I wish they had gone more for the north, south, east, west configuration where maybe up and down is your volume and left and right is your track forward and back because it's just, it, it takes a lot of time to get used to, you know, moving your finger in that, in that angled situation to get where you're going. And as far as that's concerned also, with the menu navigation, it's not always completely clear whether or not you're going to be hitting the volume up and down buttons versus the enter button on the bottom right to go and change the settings. But those are all minor quibbles. Again, overall, pretty much, and once you get into the settings and you get everything set up the way you want, it's not like you're going to be going back there and doing that stuff a lot. So those are just minor annoyances. The only other minor annoyance I have is the fact that to do a firmware upgrade, you have to put a micro SD card in it. You cannot do the update from the internal storage. And I'm hoping that's something they'll fix with future versions of this. But, you know, again, I think if you're buying this thing to listen to your audio file grade uh, recordings, chances are you're going to have a micro SD card to put this stuff on because eight gigs of internal storage really doesn't give you that much room to get a bunch of uncompressed files on or, or not uncompressed, basically lossless because your flax and your ALAX are compressed, but they're still pretty big. So in that regard, I can absolutely recommend this device. It sounds wonderful. The, the fit and finish on it's beautiful. And I think there's not much out there in the price range that's going to compete with it for what it, for what it actually gives you. So if you're out there looking for a portable media player that gives you your audio file quality and will definitely drive up to a 250 ohm set of headphones well, uh, you need to go give the Fio X3 a try. It's, it's a fantastic device. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Fio X3 portable media player. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, comment fields below. And as always, you know, subscribe to my channel and uh, go check me out on Facebook and Twitter. You can find me at Facebook at head or at facebook.com slash headphone review HQ at Twitter. You can find me at headphone HQ and go check out my site at headphone review HQ.com. Leave me a thumbs up and share with your friends, family, and everybody else. And if you plan on buying this, or if you know somebody else who might like this, you know, Christmas is around the corner. Uh, please do use my link below as that helps me bring you more and more of these reviews over time. And as always, I'll be bringing you more here in the very near future and uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks. Bye.